All right, this video is about my favorite math book of all time. It's Fourier Analysis, an introduction by Stein and Shikarchi. Could be the greatest math textbook ever written for undergraduates. And this video is to recommend this book to basically everyone who doesn't already have this book. <laughs> I'm recommending this book to students uh, for self-study if there isn't a course. Um, and I'm also here to recommend this book to instructors. This book is already uh, pretty standard if there's a course on Fourier analysis, but there's not enough courses on Fourier analysis in math departments. And I want to recommend uh, that this book uh, be used for a course uh, concurrently or even before the standard course in real analysis. So anyway, um, what is Fourier analysis? Fourier analysis is the analysis or the study of functions by decomposing them into modes, into simpler functions uh, and possibly writing them as an infinite series, uh, like trigonometric series is the standard example. It is used everywhere. Um, it is used everywhere you want to solve equations, uh, PDE, especially if the PDE is linear. It is a key tool in number theory. It is key for everyone in the sciences. It is the uh, science of how we analyze signals. And these signals could be anything. It could be light. It could be audio. It could be images. It could be radar. It could be medical imaging technologies. It's the key science of quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. Uh, it's the key science of approximation. Everyone in a STEM field needs Fourier analysis, basically. Uh, let me tell you what is special about this book. Elias Stein was one of the giants of the larger field of harmonic analysis. And he and Shikarchi wrote these four books, these, uh, this series, uh, Princeton Lectures in Analysis, to rewrite the analysis curriculum for undergraduate. This is the first of a four-part series that they wrote, uh, Fourier analysis, complex analysis, real analysis, and functional analysis. They're written very well for students, for the training of thinking about math and seeing these subjects as central to all of mathematics. So let me go through what's in this book. Um, now you can see this is a very well-worn book. I've had this a very long time. Um, so there's three parts to this book. Uh, the first part is the first four chapters. In the first chapter, they derive the physical equations that people were looking at in 1800. Um, it's called Fourier analysis because Joseph Fourier was the first person to think that uh, when he was trying to solve the heat equation in a rod, he realized he could solve it if any arbitrary function could be written as a sum of sines and cosines. And he, um, by making it an infinite uh, series, by infinitely many terms, he was able to find uh, an expression for that. And he was the first to believe that that could be done. They take you through the derivation of the equation of a plucked string or a vibrating string. And the solution of this equation leads you to... Uh, to writing out a function as a trigonometric series. Uh, the next two chapters are all about how to uh, find these series and uh, the proofs of their convergence. So is a function actually equal to its Fourier series? How well does a finite trigonometric series approximate a function? And in chapter four, we get some applications, uh, the isoparametric inequality, the equidistribution theorem, just uh, great uh, quality theorems in this book. The second part of this book is about the Fourier transform. There's both the Fourier transform on the real line and applications, the Fourier transform in space. And in those chapters, they're able to solve some uh, equations in all of space. And they talk about the Radon transform and X-ray transform and medical imaging technology. That is great stuff. And the last part of the book is these final two chapters, which are more focused on number theory, um, finite Fourier analysis, which in this book is treated as uh, number theory. It's also uh, how people actually compute with this, because uh, <laughs> in a computer, everything has to be discrete or finite. 
Um, and then chapter eight is all about a single theorem, one of the great theorems in 19th century analytic number theory, Dirichlet's theorem on primes in arithmetic progression. There are infinitely many primes in any uh, arithmetic progression where there can be primes. And then you have this uh, very nice appendix at the end. It is full of good theorems and techniques with minimal prerequisites. It is excellent in terms of its exposition. It is very clear. It is a book which is very much concerned with a mathematical point of view. It is concerned with uh, careful convergence theorems uh, and the techniques used to prove them. It attempts to ask what are the minimal assumptions? Why are things true? Uh, these are things I think everyone should be concerned with. Um, I know that the treatment of this subject, maybe in some other disciplines, is not so concerned with, uh, say, theorems like this about um, a convergence of Abel summation. Um, I'll tell you, uh, sorry, I, after learning from this book, and when I uh, took both math and physics, I didn't know coming into college, as far as I knew, I came from a mindset that uh, everyone wanted to prove things. Uh, but when I heard an exposition of Fourier series in the physics class, it was, uh, to my mind, a little bit sloppy. And um, when I heard the professor finally say something which I knew not to be true uh, from knowing this book, uh, because I knew that there was a continuous function whose Fourier series did not converge to that function point-wise. In fact, it even diverged, even though the professor uh, claimed uh, that every continuous function had point-wise convergent Fourier series. I did my very best to uh, very respectfully bring this up, uh, and it still blew up in my face, but I was, <laughs> I was correct, and it is important, uh, in fact, even though uh, he said it had never come up in his uh, however many years of being a professor. Um, there are fantastic exercises in this book. Um, in this book, so let me go to the first chapter. Um, even in the first chapter, it really walks you through the, the very basics in the exercises. There's um, <laughs> these great exercises, uh, just to make sure you know about uh, complex numbers and Cauchy sequences and the complex exponential. Everyone should do these exercises in their life at some point. I believe I covered this actually in my um, uh, part four of my Tricky Parts of Calculus series. Um, in this book, there are exercises and there are problems which are a little bit more involved and get into some uh, much more interesting well, all the exercises are interesting, but there could be some uh, difficult stuff in these problems. Um, so <laughs> I remember a particularly uh, tricky one uh, in chapter two here. Uh, uh, here, so um, Littlewood's uh, Tauberian theorem about Abel summation in this big O of one over N. <laughs> uh, that was uh, that's quite tough. Uh, but these exercises introduce you to all kinds of things, uh, the values of zeta functions, the Bernoulli numbers, um, all kinds of, uh, you know, what you can prove under different conditions and counterexamples. Just a wonderful book with great exercises, great problems. Um, and it, they're not uh, unfair. Everything is demonstrated to you. I think that the real virtue of this book is that it trains you to be an analyst. It will uh, get you to compute and get you to learn how to compare and control the size of terms. Well, how large is one thing compared to another? Should you split up the terms that you do know or the terms that are large, but maybe are there are a few of them and the terms that are small? This is the book that I use that trained me to be a mathematician. Now, I believe this book could be profitably used by anyone uh, at the time when they're just uh, thinking about higher math. Um, when you've had multivariable calculus, maybe ODE and linear algebra, where do you go from there? Well, <laughs> instead of just learning a lot of formalism, this is the subject that, that uh, course in real analysis 
that the reason uh, calculus uh, and its foundations had to be re-examined was to answer questions about convergence of Fourier series. So why not study the actual problem? Why not look at, well, what is a real equation, a real phenomena, the vibrating string, uh, or the heat equation, or these questions you might have about number theory and learn a real subject uh, instead of learning a subject in the abstract. That's why I recommend that this book, you could learn from this before you take a course in real analysis or uh, concurrently. That, that would probably be best. You will need that course in real analysis. But, but actually, it's surprising how far you can get uh, without it. There is this uh, nice appendix uh, that contains some of the material on integration. And between the exercises and this appendix, I really think that uh, um, anyone who is uh, curious, who has had multivariable calculus and knows uh, just how to solve um, second order linear ODE with constant coefficients, uh, can work through this book. And I know that because uh, I work through this book. So <laughs> in preparation for this video, I actually managed to find my old notebook. Uh, so I bought this book, you can see, uh, way back uh, in 2004, uh, when I was 17, I had gone through all the math in my high school, and I got a recommendation for this book, and I, uh, I just loved it. And so I, I worked through it uh, and had a great time. In my, I had a study period, I guess. And uh, <laughs> here's my old notebook. Here's when I, I used to write uh, very small and in pencil. And I, I don't do that anymore because uh, it gets smudged. I recommend writing in pen and a little bit bigger and using more space. But uh, this, this, is, this book trained me to be an analyst. And, um, oh man, uh, let's see. Such uh, good stuff in here. Oh, see, this is all smudged, but uh, it looks like I was deriving... Uh, the values of the zeta function that even integers and um, let's see oh this <laughs> looks like this very difficult problem about the uh, zeta function and the Bernoulli numbers maybe I came back to do some of these problems later on <laughs> let me tell you a kind of funny story here this book uh, how important this book was to me I was uh, such a little uh, jerk in, in high school, and although I, I love math, and I, I really, uh, I, I love uh, <laughs> learning about a lot of things, uh, I was, uh, I argued with a lot of teachers and, and didn't do my homework and projects, and so my grades were all over the place, and so I was uh, applying to colleges, and I was really uh, borderline hoping I would get in. My mother uh, did something I, I didn't anticipate. I didn't uh, give her my permission. I never anticipated she would do this, but she, without my knowing, uh, photocopied this this notebook and sent it to the places where I applied. And uh, it just so happens that uh, at Johns Hopkins, there was a very uh, good policy, in my view, that applicants who were borderline for admission but showed interest or, or uh, talent in one particular area had their files sent over to those programs, and um, it was actually the math department that admitted me to college, otherwise I might not have gotten in. Uh, I've le since learned from talking to my old professors that they, they don't even have that policy anymore, which is a, which is a real shame. So this book has uh, really helped me out a lot. I have used this book while teaching. Uh, I haven't taught a course specifically on Fourier analysis, but I have taught courses in PDE where I have used this book as a supplement uh, because it has uh, such good theorems. It very clearly states uh, properties of the uniqueness of Fourier series and Parseval's uh, theorem, etc., etc. Um, you can go so many places after this. It pretty much opens up uh, both all, all of analysis and um, the theory of, uh, and you can do number theory, uh, representation theory. You should learn applications. You should learn about signal processing and approximation theory. The applications are not emphasized in this book. Uh, approximation theory is not emphasized in this book. It doesn't answer, um, well, what is the best uh, finite uh, trigonometric polynomial of a given degree? 
uh, that approximates a function, say, not just an L2, but maybe an L infinity, an L1. This and radar, medical imaging, and uh, compression of images, these are all things everyone should learn after this. But uh, once you, with this book, will give you the mathematical training, the grounding to do anything in mathematics. I, I so highly recommend it. Uh, it's such a shame Elias Stein is uh, uh, dead a few years now. He ultimately became my um, mathematical grandfather. He's the advisor of my advisor. I recommend this book to everyone. All right. Uh, thanks for watching.